Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm sure that from the title of this video, some of you are like, huh? You say what? <laughs> so yes, um, in this video, I'm going to be discussing all about tube tying or tubal ligation or tying of womb like we refer to it in Nigeria. Speaking about Nigeria, the reason why I'm even making this video is because I went online researching about this topic because it's something I am going to do. I've already contacted my doctor. I've already chosen a time to do it. But the typical me, I don't just take what my doctors say and run with it. Even though I trust my doctors, I mean 100%, like for me to go and submit my body to you, it means that I trust you. But I just felt that I needed to see other mothers or other women's experiences from Nigeria specifically. And I went online and I couldn't find anything. Okay, I was just like, is it that this is not an option for birth control for women in Nigeria? Or are we just ashamed to come out and talk about it? Well, guess what? I'm going to be the shameless YouTuber to talk about it and my experience in this video, okay? So yeah, if you would like to join the conversation, then just keep on watching. All right, guys. So in layman's terms, what is tubal ligation? Tubal ligation is a form of breast control where a woman's fallopian tubes are cut and you know sewn together or cut and burnt that they burn it basically to prevent the eggs from traveling to the womb to go and meet the sperm for fertilization okay yeah i'm sure we all understand that and there are different methods of doing this from my research i'm not a doctor disclaimer i'm not a medical doctor or anything i just did my research because it is something that i want to do okay so yeah the different methods that my doctor told me about a lot of women do it when they give birth through cs okay so since they're already going to be cut open you know and they're already down there the doctors just go to their tubes pick it up and then like the glass said is the tube they pick it up and cut it and then they um sew it or i think burn it or something i don't know i don't know what they do but i know that yes they just basically block it from you know allowing eggs to pass and that's the first method okay the second method is if you give birth vaginally they go to your belly button area because your according to my doctor your womb is still high after you give birth vaginally so they can access your um, tubes from your belly button so they just go to your belly button and do an incision nothing so big i think he said it's just like this big they do that um, incision and they bring out the tubes and cut it okay then the third method is where you just go basically for the surgery even if you've had your kids years ago and you basically want to do it you just go in your books for the surgery you do it and yeah, done basically i heard that the recovery time is not that bad actually like for instance if you are doing cs you don't have cs and giving birth you don't have extra recovery time that you would normally have you know from if you didn't have the procedure done i hope that makes sense but i think if you go for the procedure on its own i think they say it's just one day or two days some people actually go home the same day or something anyway so yeah that is how it is done okay now why am i considering it why did i go and talk to my doctor about it if you guys watch my video about my iud experience you guys will understand that my iud on its own just fell out on its own the team decided that it was not ready to stay and it fell out okay so i was supposed to go back and you know get the iud inserted back because to be honest no other birth control methods sound but be sounds better to me i'm sorry they tell me about the patch they tell me about pills tell me about um even hormonal iud's every other thing sounds bad to me except the basic iud that i had before so i was supposed to go back to get that basic iud and then i now you know talk to somebody someone i know one person one nigerian since i've known women <laughs> only one nigerian woman told me that she did it and initially when she told me that she did it i was shocked because it's not something that i've ever heard from any nigerian saying they did so since she told me that she did it it has been stuck in my head like isn't that going to be the best option for me so i decided to go ahead and weigh my pros and cons and i also discussed with my doctor and yeah so even though i haven't given her my final say I, I am leaning more to doing it than not doing it okay so yeah let me tell you guys reasons why i am considering getting my tubes tied okay the first reason why i want to get my tubes tied is that you guys know that i am not a textbook case for reproductive anything okay <laughs> let me explain myself for instance 
most people go through life just having their periods and everything is normal with them. No, well, let me not say most. A lot of people go through life and they don't really have issues with their periods. For me, I used to battle very painful periods, really, really painful periods. There were times I used to go to the hospital and get injections for it, especially when I was in school. There were, there have been, I used to take drugs all the time. At some point, I was living basically on um, evening primrose oil. Like, I used to take it every single day. Like, I was taking evening primrose, primrose oil every day, omega 3 oils. And then a few days to my period, I start taking felvin and some other painkillers just so that my period would be bearable. It wasn't like the periods were not painful anymore. They were just more bearable for me, okay? Now, that's just about my period. Now, when it comes to, um, you know, giving birth and all, after I got married, like I said, I wasn't the textbook case because my own case was even unexplained. It wasn't like, oh, this is what's wrong with her or that's what's wrong with her. No, my own was even unexplained. So it went unexplained for four years until God stepped in and, you know, gave me my kids, okay? And that's fine. Now, after I've had my kids, IUD that my friend puts, and other women I've known, they've put their IUD five years, they go and change it, some change it before five years, some change it after five years, some it stays for ten years. Me too, I ran and put IUD. After one year plus, my own decided to fly out, <laughs> okay? So, actually, fly out is, is, sounds simple. It pushed its way out painfully out of my uterus, okay? So... <laughs> So yeah, I'm laughing, but it's actually true. I am not a textbook case for all these things. So I'm just to myself that you see what? I've spent so much time bothering and wondering about what is going on down there, about my reproductive organs and my reproductive health and all that and all that and all that. And I'm tired. I need something that I can just do and forget about it. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I'm considering it. The second reason why I'm considering it is that it's also permanent. Okay, it's permanent. So it's something that, like I said, once I do it, I know that I'll be... I'll be done with that part of my life and I can focus on other things of my life and be happy. <laughs> it's not like I'm not happy now, but I'm just saying like, I don't, I don't want to spend the rest of my life thinking about, oh, I need to take the pill or I don't need to take the pill. I need to go and check. I don't need to check that. Or I need to do that. As in, I don't just want to go through the rest of my life doing that. Okay. And again, another um, advantage of it is that it prevents unwanted pregnancies okay and the truth is that i do not want to bring a child into this world that i cannot care for or that i am not ready for or that i'm not mentally prepared for okay i don't want to do that okay and yeah many people see it as why don't you have more kids you know you should have more kids we take care of your kids it's so nice oh, oh, oh. you should have more kids and I keep telling them, the way I take care of my kids because of the number of kids that I have, if I decide to, don't get me wrong, I actually love kids and I love taking care of kids. But I know for a fact, if I decide to take on more kids, I'm not going to care for those kids the way I want to care for them. And that's just the truth. And it's not even about money. Because people say, ah, don't worry, you can afford to have more kids. Now, what's your problem? You can afford to have more kids. And I'm just like, number one, you are not in my bank account. You're not, you're not my financial manager or be my, my accountant. So you don't know whether I am capable of taking more, taking care of more kids or not that's one and then two the way me and my husband think we see it this way we want to give our kids the best so even though i can afford to have 10 kids can i give those 10 kids the best that i want to give each child and how we calculate what we can give each child is based on our finances at this time Okay, it's not, it's not, of course, we are praying to get better, we are praying to hammer, we are praying for every, <laughs> but at this time that we are choosing to bring children into the world, can we give them the best we want to give them? Based on our finances now, if Korea were to decide to go to the best university that I want to put her in, for instance, if she comes to meet me and say, oh, mommy, I just got an admission into so and so university, can I afford to pay for her school fees without killing myself? Okay, and... I'm talking about based on what I earn now, based on what we earn as a, or based on our finances as a family right now. Can we give our children the best we want to give them? I, I don't want to wait. I don't want to have so many kids and then be hoping that in the future things will get better. No. Based on what is happening now, can I give my children the best? Okay. Now, in the case of Cora and Ava, I know that by the time they get to the university level, we would have saved up enough for them to go to where we want them to be. Okay. Now, if I had four more kids, five more kids, Will I be able to save up for the five kids or the six kids? Okay. So these are the things that inform our decision whether we should have more kids or not. Having more kids, yeah, it sounds nice in theory, but in reality, how realistic is it? Okay. How well will I take care of the kids to my satisfaction? Because anything I do in this life, I do it to my own satisfaction. You, you might be seeing it as, uh-uh, 
you, 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 you have a nice house, you can afford to have five children. But for me, I'm seeing it as I want each child to have a room. Can they have a room? Can each child have a room? <laughs> you know, anyway, I'm just simplifying this whole thing, but it's way deeper than that. So I don't want to bring in a child into the world that I'm not prepared for. Yes, I know it's a miracle. I know that it's God that gives kids, but yes, he gave us a lot of autonomy when it comes to reproduction okay he got a lot of sense like a lot of it is also in our hands okay anyone that if i do all i have to do because i'm supposed to get pregnant with their tubes tied okay so if i get pregnant with my tubes tied i know that's okay this one now god now god plants the picking there it's not it's not anything i did okay it's god that literally planted the child there so anyway that is it about you know the reasons why i am strongly considering tying my womb and just getting it over with okay now the disadvantages and the reasons why i'm just like hmm, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> One of the major reasons is that, like I said in the first, my first point, I am not a textbook case. So I might see it as if I just tie my tubes now, my life is going to be sweeter. I'm just going to start balling. I'm going to start living the life that I want to live. It might not work that way for me because I am not a textbook case, like I said. Okay. Now, even though the percentage of women who, um, have no issues after tying their wounds that is very very large like so many women don't have any issues with it i actually saw a lot of women who had issues with it okay because i had to go and do my research online and on youtube one particular video opened my eyes as in it didn't turn my eyes to the back <laughs> like the kind of thing she was saying that happened to her when she tied her tubes i was just like nope 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 if this kind of thing were to happen to me after i have tied my tube like i'm going to be devastated so that's one of the reasons why I'm considering this, but also why I'm not considering it, okay? I am not a textbook case for reproductive anything, so let me not even play with myself in that way, okay? Now, the number two reason why I am considering it is because even though it is permanent, okay, it is also not... It can be reversed. Let me put it that way. It can be reversed. So, like, tattoos, like, you know, piercings and all that, they are made to be permanent, but they can be reversed, Okay? Now, the issue with reversing it is that, for instance, if I tie my tubes and I realize that, oh, it was a bad decision for me, I still have issues with it, and I want to reverse it, it's going to be very expensive. And not, not just that it's expensive to reverse it, you are not sure that things are going to work the way they were working before, okay? It's almost like... You're just going into it with faith. Like, let me just reverse it and see what happens. It might not change much. It might not even do anything for you. So... I'm just like, even though, yes, it is too permanent for me to consider doing because, like I said, I'm not a textbook case. If things go wrong with me, I'll now have to go and pay, I mean, thousands of dollars just to reverse something that I use my hand to go and do. But, you know, but in my own case, like, for instance, if I, if I, had have issues with my IUD, for instance, I can pull it out. Like the other one that fell out the other day, you know, and I was having issues with that one. Like I told you guys, anyway, go and watch that video, you know. So if I do something like IUD, I can quickly just pull it out or go to the hospital and get it removed, okay. And another thing why I, I'm like, is tying of tubes really the best option? It has basically the same failure rate as iud okay which is less than one percent so it has the same failure rate as iud just the only difference between it and iud is that number one iud is that you are inserting a foreign object into your body and iud is not permanent like i think it stays they have five years ten years and all that okay so that's just the major difference between it and iud so i'm like is the difference between it and iud enough for me to consider doing it to an extent yes but to an extent no i don't know it's just confusing that's why i'm making this video so that i can see if anybody in nigeria has done it or in nigeria and even if you're abroad and you've done it what was your experience like please let's make this interactive i would like to know your thoughts if you have a friend or a cousin or an auntie a sister that has done it let me know their experience in the comment section okay yeah so this one is worthy of mention i don't really think it's going to be my case but it's worthy of mention okay a lot of women actually regret it okay yes men who don't talk about this part but a lot of women actually regret tying their wombs and after they've tied it many of them cannot afford to reverse it and age plays a factor in the percentage or the probability of you regretting it okay so i'm not sure of the exact statistics but according to what i read somewhere women who do it below the age of 25 or so they have a 40 percent chance 
a little bit above, I think 45% chance of regretting it, okay? Now, 40% might sound like a small number, like, oh, 60% don't regret it. But 40% is actually a very large number. Like, for instance, if 1,000 women get it done, at least 400 are going to regret it. That's what it means. So, it's actually a high percentage, percentage if you consider it, okay? Women below the age of 35, I think they have 20 something percent chance of regretting it. And women um, above the age of 40 or something like that have like lower chances of regretting it, okay? And I'm sure that what contributes to the fact that um, the regret rate is lower with older women is the fact that many of them have already had their kids or many of them, you know, don't just want kids anymore. And at that point in your life, I'm sure you'll be really, really sure if you don't want kids or not, okay? So that's why they might regret it less. Unlike when you do it when you're 25 or 30, yeah, at some point you might be like, what did I do to myself? Like, I really want more kids. Especially if your kids now get a little bit older and you're now freer, you're now more established in your job or your business or whatever it was that you are considering when you decide to tie your womb, you might have, you know, made more progress in it and you're just like, actually have more time and finances and, you know, whatever to take care of another child. So, ah, I want another child. So, those are the reasons why people might, you know, actually regret it at a younger age, okay? Now, for me, I don't think that's gonna be my case because, to be honest, I love kids, like I keep saying, but I don't want to be the one to repopulate the earth, like... <laughs> It's not only made ahead be fruitful and be multiplied, okay? <laughs> so anyway, I'm just kidding, but yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, it's not going to be my case. My own type of regret is if I do it and then all the things that I felt that, oh, once I do it, I'll stop having these issues and that issues with birth control. If I do it and I now start having those issues or whatever, I will start having other issues I didn't even anticipate. Ha! It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. Okay. So yeah. Um, um, if you want to read more or know more about this, you can go on YouTube. Basically, there's this gynecologist that I follow on YouTube. Her name is Mama Doctor Jones. I love her videos so much. She breaks things down in in, in layman's terms. Like we need more people like her on YouTube to really explain some of these things for us because we as women, you go to hospitals. They don't really explain these things in detail to you. Me, I'm even lucky that I have a doctor who is a white woman. And I'm sure that's why she even took her time to explain this thing to me. I'm not saying that black women don't do it. I'm just saying she was more open to the discussion than the previous doctor that I had who even started IUD for me. So that's just the comparison I am going by, you know, basically, disclaimer again. Okay, so, but I feel like white people or you know our brothers they are more open to the idea of tying their wounds than nigerians but even as i'm saying that <laughs> i was shocked to find out that number one in nigeria to tie your womb you need spousal consent in the many hospitals not all hospitals like the hospital that i want to do it in the woman not even ask me anything about my husband self okay but in many hospitals you need your husband to sign i i approve that my wife will go and cut her tubes, I approve as the Lord and Savior of her life. I approve that my wife can go ahead or I disapprove. She cannot get it done. That's what they do in Nigeria, okay? But I was shocked to find that it's not just Nigeria. Even abroad, they need spousal consent in some hospitals there. I heard that even in Catholic hospitals there, they don't even do it at all. Like, it's not even an option. They don't even do IUD. It's not that kind of woman that they will now do. Okay, so let's not even bash Nigeria too much when we're talking. I say, oh, Nigeria, this Nigeria. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. Women, properties. We are properties. <laughs> I'm not a property shop, but I'm just saying, women everywhere are regarded as properties, no matter how advanced the society is to an extent women are still regarded as an attachment to the man which is just so sad and annoying but yeah it is what it is and we know that these things are you know changing at the faster rate right now with the growth of social media and stuff like that but anyway let me not keep rambling thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys Mwah.